The restaurant owner now responding after video showed a worker hitting and shoving a homeless man. The hard discussion, the confrontation is sparking in Pacific Beach. Finding fires on the water, the help San Diego is getting to make sure firefighters have the tools they need. Plus. honor for a San Diego singing group why they need help with a special show at Pearl Harbor. A 10 News follow-up now after this controversial video. It shows a Pacific Beach sandwich shop worker throwing items and shoving a table into a homeless man. And now we're getting a response from the shop owner. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena shows us how the incident is sparking a discussion from business owners about how to handle these tense confrontations with homeless in the area. The video has been viewed thousands of times since it was posted Wednesday. A shirtless man being violently pushed off the sidewalk by a worker from BMO Sandwich Shop in Pacific Beach. San Diego police are now investigating and tell 10 News they're looking for the homeless man to see if he wants to provide a statement or cooperate in the investigation. We went back to BMO's today and were told no one could talk to us on camera. But employees confirm this statement posted to Facebook signed by a Mark L is from one of their owners, Mark Lowski. The message says in part, while there is no excuse for the actions that occurred, this particular person has been rather malicious to our community for the past year. It goes on to say, I am deeply apologetic for the events that occurred and hope we can all move forward and learn an important lesson. Kareem Boris with Business for Good San Diego says the incident is an example of how quickly something can escalate. His organization gives members these toolkits on what to do in certain situations involving the homeless. Here's what to do if. Someone sleeping or loitering at your front door. Someone has walked into the business. Well, you want to help them. Some business owners we spoke with in PB say they've tried to ask nicely, but sometimes people loitering or trespassing simply don't listen. There is an absolute moment where if you don't feel safe and if your employees don't feel safe, you absolutely have to call the non-emergency number first. And if you don't feel like that's the right thing to do, call 911. Lindsay Pena, 10 News. San Diego police say they encourage people to call when officers are needed, but they also say calls are prioritized based on the danger to public. A brush fire at Kit Carson Park in Escondido is under control after a brief scare this afternoon. The 10 News breaking news tracker was there when a helicopter made a water drop to help put out the flames. The fire burned about two acres on the west side of the park near the 15 and the Westfield Mall. No buildings were threatened and no one was hurt. Investigators are trying to figure out how the fire started. There are new details about the Tierra Santa home where a two year old girl was found dead in a car. Now that little girl's body was discovered in the back seat in the driveway on military housing earlier this month. The mother was taken for a psychiatric evaluation shortly after. We were able to get police records that show officers were called to that home back in June. That call was for a report of domestic violence. Child abuse detectives are investigating the girl's death. No arrests have been made. And the FBI is asking for help identifying a bank robber who has struck twice in the last eight days, including just a few hours ago in La Mesa. These are pictures from a man just before noon. Now he was at the Wells Fargo inside the Vons in La Mesa. He threatened to shoot the teller if he didn't get cash. It was the same M.O. at another robbery in the U.S. Bank and the Vons in Rolando, August the 15th. No one saw a gun during either robbery, but if you recognize the man, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. You may remember this wild boat fire. It happened two years ago on San Diego Bay. It burned for days. The smoke forced nearby businesses to close. And now the city is turning to outside help to make sure it doesn't happen again. And new at 6 o'clock, 10 News reporter Mackenzie Maynard is at Seaport Village with the effort to get firefighters the tools they need on the water. That cargo boat was docked right here and firefighters fought the flames for nearly a week. This was the scene late September in 2017. It's to my understanding that the furthest a firefighter made into this fire was about six feet. Uh, before they started getting pushed out by the fire. It's an image most business managers in the Seaport Village will never forget. Like Sergio Velasco, the assistant manager of Edgewater Grill. At the beginning it was a normal business. But after days of smoke bellowing into the sky. People stopped sitting outside and um, employees started complaining about 
how that can affect their health. The Norton Sound burned for almost a week. Two years later, and now the city has hired an outside consultant to look into the cargo boat fire. San Diego Fire gave us a statement Friday. They didn't offer specifics about what the consultant might recommend, but say the focus is to determine if any additional equipment or training is needed when dealing with emergencies on the bay. Those cargo ships cross the bay all the time. Meantime, restaurant managers are hoping something like this never happens again. The city says they expect that study to be wrapped up by fall of this year. Reporting in Seaport Village, Mackenzie Maynard, 10 News. During that fire two years ago, no one was hurt. The flames never spread to buildings on shore. NBA coach and San Diego native Luke Walton will not be disciplined by the league over sexual assault allegations. Earlier this year, we reported that sports reporter Kelly Tennant accused Walton of assaulting her in a hotel room in Santa Monica back in 2014. At the time, Walton was a coach with the Golden State Warriors. He's currently head coach of the Kings. Well, today the NBA announced its investigation could not find evidence to support Tennant's claims. Her lawsuit against Walton is ongoing and could go to trial next year. A FedEx driver making a delivery came out to find his truck stolen. And police arrested the parolee after they found the FedEx truck near 43rd and Alpha Street in Southcrest this morning. They say the thief even dropped off some packages to a Logan Heights address. Another FedEx worker watched it unfold thanks to the cameras inside the vehicle. And besides the cameras, the company also tracks the truck's whereabouts, watching every move. And everything is back open today at Balboa Park after yesterday's gas leak. A construction crew hit a gas line yesterday while working at a project at the zoo. The leak forced many of the museums and other attractions in the area to close. But repair crews made enough progress today for all of the sites to reopen. All right, it's going to be a nice weekend to get to Balboa Park, too. Also, nice weekend for the beach. A live look at La Jolla Shores from our 10 News Sky Cam over on Mount Soledad. Angelica Campos is here now. Enjoy it now, you say, because it's going to heat up this weekend. That's right. Today, a lovely day. Probably yeah. the nicest day of the entire week. And you can see the temperature is right at 82 degrees in Ramona. Beautiful day in Escondido with 82 degrees right now. In downtown San Diego, so gorgeous with blue skies, 73. But those temperatures are in for a warm up and not just the heat, the humidity will go up this weekend. Here's just a quick outlook for the next three days for the weekend from mid 70s to upper 70s on Sunday. But we have to factor the humidity that will make temperatures feel like we're in the 80s. Inland communities will feel like you're in the 90s by Sunday and the humidity will stick around into early next week. I'll pinpoint why is turning humid, why the heat, all that in your seven day forecast. We'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Now, happening tonight, young activists working to prevent gun violence will have a chance to meet with local leaders. The student group is called Team Enough. They're calling the event Hear Our Voice. It starts at the Encinitas Community Center at 630. North County Congressman Mike Levin and San Diego mayoral candidate Todd Gloria will be among the leaders attending. San Diego Congressman Scott Peters is pitching a plan to help solve the climate change crisis, but some of his constituents want him to get behind a different plan instead of the better known proposal called the Green New Deal. Our planet, our future. Those protesters have held several rallies outside Peter's office. He is only one of the four local Democratic Congress members not to sign the Green New Deal. And we caught up with Peters today. He says that Green New Deal isn't written in a way that can get enough support to pass. I agree with everything in the Green New Deal that has to do with climate. It's just some of the extraneous things like the government guaranteeing jobs for everybody or free college that I don't agree with and I think drive people away from the solution. If Peters calls his plan the climate playbook. He says it's a series of practical bills that can make an immediate impact to help reverse climate change. Opponents say the Green New Deal is the best way to combat the crisis. More local cities are taking steps to form their own utility alternatives to SDG&E. It's called community choice. The community takes over buying the power while SDG&E still handles transmission, customer service and the billing. Well, supporters say community choice programs use cleaner energy and can beat utility prices. This week, Carlsbad voted to join Del Mar in teaming with North County cities. 
and Sanitas voted to join with the city of San Diego, which has already agreed to partner with Chula Vista and La Mesa.